In this lesson, we're going to talk about derivatives of trig functions, limit theorems, definition of a derivative application, and then finally higher derivatives. So we'll go from position to velocity to acceleration. Our first couple of theorems we're going to look at, we have right here the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. Then we also have the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine of x minus 1 all over x equals 0. So we're going to use these theorems to evaluate these next two problems. The example says to evaluate the following limits. Part A says the limit is x goes to 0, sine of 5x over 2x. So with the sign right here, you'll probably notice we're going to use this theorem on the left. In order to use this theorem, it specifically needs to be the limit as x goes to 0, and then sine of x over x. So whatever we're taking the sign of here needs to be the same in the denominator. So for this problem, we have sine of 5x, and we're not going to manipulate that. That's just going to be sine of 5x. So that means we need 5x in the denominator. So what I did is I got rid of this 2 by pulling a 1 half to the front of the fraction. So now we have 1 half, and then we have sine of 5x over x. With limits, you can pull a constant to the front of the limit. And now, again, to be able to apply the theorem, we need sine of 5x over 5x. So we're going to multiply this fraction by 5 over 5. We're going to take this 5 and move it to the front of the limit. And then we take this 5 and we multiply it to the x, making 5x in the denominator. So according to this theorem right here, this limit equals 1. So 5 halves times 1 just makes a final answer of 5 halves. This example says the limit as x goes to 0 of 2x plus 1 minus cosine of x all over 3x. So first step, this 3 right here, I rewrote it in the front of the fraction as a 1 -third. And remember the limit of a constant you can pull the constant to the front of the limit. Because of the cosine, we want to use this theorem here on the right. So we're going to do a little manipulating. So I took this whole fraction and split it to two fractions. So you have the 2x over x here on the left. And then we have the 1 minus cosine x over x here on the right. The 2x over x reduces to just 2. And then in the numerator right here, I just flipped these around and wrote negative cosine x plus 1 so that I can get this closer to looking more like the theorem we're going to use. So right now we have the limit and we have a sum of functions, so we're going to rewrite this as the limit of the first function plus the limit of the second function. All right, at this point you might notice that this says minus cosine x plus 1, and to use this theorem we need cosine x minus 1. So we can just factor out a negative, and I'm going to move that negative to the front of the limit. So I pulled the negative to the front, and now you have the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine of x minus 1 all over x. So now we can apply the theorem. So here we have the limit of a constant is just equal to that constant. And then right here, we now can apply the theorem. So this expression just equals 0. And our final answer is 2 thirds. This example says consider the function f of x equals sine of x. So here's the graph of sine of x. We want to look at the derivative of sine. So right here, you can think of the slope being a positive 1. That means for f prime, we're going to go up to a height of 1. Right here, the slope of the tangent line is 0. So down here, we're going to go to a height of 0. Right here, this would be a slope of a tangent line of negative 1. So at pi, we go down 1. Again, right here, your slope of the tangent line would be a slope of 0. And then right here, positive 1. So I continued the graph over here. And you'll notice that this is the graph of cosine. So that means the derivative of sine is cosine. So now looking at the graph of cosine, we're going to look at its derivative. Using the same method, the slope of the tangent line here is 0, so we go to a height of 0. Right here, the slope of the tangent line is negative 1, so we go to a height of negative 1. Right here, the slope of the tangent line is 0, so we go to 0. Right here, the slope of the tangent line is positive 1, so we go up 1, and then back to 0. So looking at this graph, you might notice that it's the sine curve, but it's been reflected across the x-axis. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And that leads us to all of these theorems. We have the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then you have your other functions over here. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. The derivative of secant is secant tangent and the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So at first this really looks like a lot, but I want to point out a couple of things. When you're taking the derivative of a trig function that starts with a c, its derivative is negative, so the derivative of cosecant is negative, derivative of cotangent is a negative. So that's a nice little pattern, and honestly the way I memorized them is I just repeated them out loud a bunch of times and then it kind of sticks. 
sine is cosine, cosine is negative sine, tangent is secant squared, and then if you go over here, cotangent is negative cosecant squared, secant is just secant tangent, and cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So these kind of sound similar, and then these guys also sound similar. If anyone has a really good way to memorize all of these, please reach out and let me know. Okay, so using these theorems, we're going to start taking some of these derivatives in these following problems. So in this example, we have y equals 2x plus 4 cosecant of x. We want to find dy dx. The derivative of 2x is just 2. So for this part of the problem, we're going to drop the 4 down. And the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. And I just rewrote our final answer as 2 minus 4 times cosecant cotangent. This example says let f equal x squared sine of x, find f prime. The big thing you want to notice here is you have x squared times sine of x. Because you have two different functions, both with x in them, we're going to use the product rule. So make sure you watch my previous lesson on product rule and quotient rule. I have a nice little graphic organizer for using the product rule. All right, so I set up the two functions. We have x squared, we have sine of x. You take their derivatives going down. Again, the derivative of sine is cosine. Then you start in the upper left corner and you multiply these, and then you add the product of these guys. So again, you multiply these guys, you swing it around, and then you add the product of these guys. So our final answer is gonna be x squared cosine x plus two x sine x. This example says find the equation of the tangent line of y equals sine x over one plus cosine x at the point zero one. Remember, to write the equation of a tangent line, you need a point and slope. So we already have the point. We need to find the slope by taking the derivative of this quotient. So according to the quotient rule, we start low d high. So here's our low. And then next is d high. So we're going to take the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Then we go minus high and then d low. So the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine and it's all over the low squared. So I left this expression here as just one plus cosine quantity times cosine of x. Over here I multiplied these to get positive and then sine of x quantity squared, and it's still all over one plus cosine of x quantity squared. At this point, we can plug in zero for x. I think I got them all plugged in, and now we're gonna simplify. And you end up getting slope is one half. And when you plug the point and slope into point slope formula, you get y minus one equals one half times the quantity x minus zero. And we can also write our answer like this, or we could add one over, any of them are fine. This example says, for what value of x does the line y equals x plus two sine x have a horizontal tangent line? So the key to this problem is remembering that a horizontal tangent line means that we're gonna have a slope equal to zero. So we're gonna take this equation and we're gonna find the slope or we're gonna take its derivative. The derivative of x is one. Next, I'm gonna take this two and just drop it down. And the derivative of sine is cosine. And finally, since we want a horizontal tangent line where slope is zero, we're gonna set this derivative, which is slope, equal to zero. At this point, we isolate the cosine, so we subtract one and divide by two. So we wanna solve the trig equation cosine of x equals negative one half. So we're asking ourselves, cosine of what angle equals negative one half? When solving trig equations, I like to use our acronym All Students Take Calculus. So the way this works is all the trig functions are positive in quadrant one, sine and cosecant are positive in quadrant two, tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrant three, and cosine and secant are positive in quadrant four. Since we have that cosine is equal to a negative value, we know not to look for answers in quadrants one and four because this would be where cosine is positive. So our answers are gonna be found in quadrants two and three. So the reference angle 60 degrees is going to work. We have cosine of 60 is gonna be equal to one half, again, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's gonna work. And also, since we're over here on the left side, it makes this side negative. And remember, this is just a reference angle, but we're gonna start at zero and we're gonna rotate all the way to this angle. We're also gonna use radians, so if we go one-third, two-thirds pi, that's gonna be the angle that gets us to here, so that works. And then we add two on pi to the n, because again, to get from here to here is two-thirds pi, but you can also add an infinite number of two pi's to represent the same angle. And then also we have this angle here, so again, that would be four-thirds pi. So here's our two x values for which this equation has a horizontal tangent. For this next example, I included the definition of a derivative as reference. Remember we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. 
This example says use the definition of a derivative to find the following. So part A has a limit as h goes to 0. Right here we have sine of 5 pi over 6 plus h minus 1 half all over h. And we want to know what this equals. So normally when we wanted to find the derivative, we would take the function and plug it into this formula. So now we're given the formula and we want to use it to find the derivative of f. So the key is that right here is f of x plus h. So if this is f of x plus h, we know that f is going to be the sine function. Next right in here is x plus h. So we have 5 pi over 6 plus h. So that means that x is 5 pi over 6. Last, this expression equals the derivative of f. So we're going to take f and we're going to take its derivative and then we're going to plug in x. So the derivative of sine is cosine and then we're going to plug 5 pi over 6 in for cosine. So that gets us over here and cosine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. So that means our answer is c. We're going to do the same thing for part b. It says the limit as h goes to 0. We have tangent of pi over 4 plus h minus 1 all over h. So we want to first identify f and to find f we're going to look right here. f is going to be tangent. Next this is going to be x plus h so that means x is pi over 4. And then finally, this whole limit expression is equal to f prime of x. So we have the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we plug pi over 4 in for x, and we get secant squared of pi over 4. To evaluate this, a couple of things are going to happen. Remember, when you have a square right here, that means quantity squared. So we can think of this as secant of pi over 4 quantity squared. The other thing is to evaluate secant, it's the same as 1 over cosine. So I kind of did that in one step. Instead of secant, it's 1 over cosine of pi over 4. And then again, because of the square, we can go quantity squared. And cosine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. So root 2 squared is just 2, and 2 squared is 4. So we get 1 over 2 over 4, which is 1 over 1 half. If you multiply by the reciprocal or copy dot flip, you just get 2. So our final answer is A. For this last definition, we have s of t is equal to the position of a particle at time t. We have v of t, which represents velocity, is equal to the derivative of the position function. And then we have a of t is acceleration, and that equals the derivative of velocity, or we call this the second derivative of position. So again, if you take the derivative of the position function, it gives you velocity. If you take the derivative of this again, or we say second derivative, it gives you acceleration. A couple definitions, a particle is at rest when its velocity is equal to zero. And then we also have acceleration. It's the instantaneous rate of change of velocity with respect to time. This example says a particle moves along a straight line, t is greater than zero. The position of the particle is given by s of t, which equals this polynomial, where s of t is measured in centimeters and t in seconds the acceleration measured in centimeters per second squared at the time when the velocity is zero is... So I just rewrote the position function. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take its derivative to find velocity. Make sure to use notation so whoever's looking at your paper knows what you're doing. So the derivative of two t cubed is gonna be six t squared. The derivative of plus t squared is gonna be two t. The derivative of negative 4t is going to be negative 4, and the derivative of 3 is 0. So now we have the velocity function. So we're going to take the derivative of velocity to find acceleration. But first it says we want to find the acceleration at the time when velocity is 0, meaning at the time when the particle is at rest. So what I want to do first is I want to set this equal to 0. So I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 1 half. And now we can factor this. So our trinomial factors to 3t minus 2 times t plus 1. When you set these both equal to 0 and solve by the zero product property, you get 2 thirds and negative 1. But because t equals time, we're crossing out the negative answer. And next we're going to find acceleration. So remember, acceleration is the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position. So we take our velocity function, 6t squared plus 2t minus 4, and we take its derivative. The derivative of 6t squared is going to be 12t. The derivative of 2t is going to be just 2. And finally, the problem wants the acceleration at the time when the velocity is 0. So we found that the velocity is 0 at 2 thirds, so we're going to plug 2 thirds in for acceleration. So we have 12 times 2 thirds plus 2. So we end up getting 10 centimeters per second squared. This example says let f of x equal sine of x times cosine of x, and we want to find the first derivative and the second derivative. 
For the function f, we have sine of x times cosine of x. Because we have a product of functions, both functions have a variable in it, we're going to use the product rule. So we put sine of x here and we put cosine here. We take the derivatives going down. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Start in the upper left corner, multiply these, swing it around, multiply these, and put a plus. So again, f prime is the product of these plus the product of these. So here's our answer for f prime. So to find f double prime, we need to take the derivative of this. To take the second derivative, I rewrote sine squared as sine times itself, and I did the same thing for cosine. And the reason why I wrote it out is because at this point, in order to take the derivative, we need to use the product rule. The derivative of negative sine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the negative down, and the derivative of just sine is cosine. Right here, the derivative of sine is cosine. And over here, the derivative of cosine is negative sine for both of these. All right, so we're going to apply the fish on both of them, the product rule. You multiply these guys plus the product of these. Same thing here, it's the product of these plus the product of these. So I wrote this one out right here, and then put a plus, and then I wrote this one out down here. And you notice we have negative sine, cosine, negative sine, cosine, plus negative sine, cosine, and another negative sine, cosine. So simplified, we have negative 4 sine x, cosine x.